Welcome to Tutor IMG. Medical Shots. COVID-19 Vaccine FAQs. Hello everyone. Welcome to today's discussion. Um, the Tutor IMG team today is going to be talking about the COVID-19 vaccine. We're going to be talking about some of the most important and concerning questions that most of you have about the COVID-19 vaccine. So I'm going to be talking to Dr. Aisha Chakot about the vaccine and all the things that we need to know. So um, Dr. Aisha, what is this COVID vaccine? What type of vaccine is it? Okay, so the COVID-19 vaccine is mRNA vaccine. And uh, one thing I would like to clarify over here is that it does not have the live virus in it. So after you receive the vaccine, uh, your muscle cells will receive the signals and basically they start making a protein, which is harmless protein. And we call that as coronavirus spike protein. So this is the same protein, which actually the virus has it on its outer shell. So once your immune system will detect that protein, you will start building antibodies and these antibodies protects you from COVID-19 infection. So the good news is that if you get infection, you develop antibodies, but by getting the vaccine, you are also developing antibodies without getting any infection. Excellent. So you're kind of taking a shortcut um, and you're saving a lot of pain. Um, now, there is this concern about this uh, vaccine altering human DNA. How much truth is there in that statement? Okay, so the most important thing to understand is that uh, that we need to know is that the location of mRNA is in cytoplasm of the cells and the DNA is located inside the nucleus. The messenger RNA does not have a component that convert it into the DNA. So keep in mind if it does not have the component, so it does not alter your DNA. So just keep in mind, it does not alter your DNA. Great, okay. And what about the uh, microchip concern, the nanotechnology oh. microchip? Okay, so the vaccine does have the nanotechnology. So um, if you mean nano, nano mean a very, very small particles. Mm -hmm. So these are basically a small fat particles, which the vaccine uses to stabilize it. So mm -hmm. it does have the nanotechnology, but it does not have any kind of microchip. Perfect. So that should help people feel a lot better and more comfortable about taking the vaccine. I mean, the kind of rumors that were going around, I honestly got those vibes, you know, those um, um, horrible movies that we watch about the zombie apocalypse upon us. It exactly. was sort of heading that way. But it's good to know that those are all just um, things that people don't need to be concerned about. Now, about the vaccine, we hear that there are two doses and there is an interval between them. Yes, so in order to get complete protection, you have to take two doses. So depend on which brand have you taken. So usually it's 21 days or 28 days. And, and is it important really to go for both of these um, doses? Yes, it is very important because if you receive one vaccine, Mm -hmm. uh, you are 52% protected. But if you're going to take both vaccines, so you will be 95% protected. So this is very important that you receive both the dosage. Absolutely. 95% is definitely better than no protection at all. And what about the remaining 5%? I think um, that suggests that we need to continue with the protective gear. Yes, so after getting the vaccine, it is very important to wear all the protective gear, which include definitely the mask, uh, following the social distancing rule and washing the hands. The reason is that uh, the vaccine is going to provide protection for 95%, but again, you have to keep in mind, in order to cover that 5%, you have to wear all the protective um, gears like masses and of course you need to wash your hand you need to follow the social distancing rule even um, in five person after receiving vaccine if you get infected maybe it could be very very mild or maybe you can be asymptomatic but you are at the risk of transmitting it to others right so that's why it's very important 
Absolutely, wise words indeed. Um, what about side effects, uh, Dr. Aisha, about um, getting the vaccine? What can people expect? Okay, so there are mild side effects like, uh, with, like any other vaccine, like you can have the pain at the injection site, you can have um, headache, you can have like muscle pain, joint pain, you can have the slight fever as well. But usually these side effects subside within 48 hours. So they are pretty much mild and you should be able to feel well after 48 hours. Okay, um, you, you talked about uh, getting a fever as a side effect. Now, um, how do they know that this fever is just a mild side effect and when should they consider maybe getting a COVID test, um, you know, based on the fact that they are getting these mild symptoms that suggest they might be sick? So after the vaccine, if they start to have these, when should they be concerned? Okay, so that's a very good and valid question. So after you have received the vaccine and you have developed high fever. So if I say high fever, it means fever above 100.3 degree Fahrenheit, right? So if you develop this much of the fever, like after getting the vaccine within even 48 hours, then you should contact your health professional and probably they will do the COVID test just to figure it out that you might have caught an infection that could happen even before, right? right. Getting the COVID-19 vaccine. So if the symptoms are mild, they are, they are, uh, they are actually none of the concern. But if anything is more serious, like I'm telling you, like the fever, if it's more than 100.3 degree Fahrenheit, so it's something which is concerned. Right, and then they should also self-isolate. I mean, there should be no confusion about a way exactly. to work. Until and, unless uh, they get right. the negative result back. Yeah, they need to That's isolate. Right. Perfect. Um, now we've seen that sometimes people get these really horrible reactions to vaccines, right? They end up having um, what we call an anaphylactic level reaction where their throat's going to close up and they're just going to have a terrible, terrible episode. Um, can those people um, take this vaccine safely? Okay, so there are two things to consider over here. The first thing is that if you have ever before developed a serious reaction, after taking any kind of vaccine, then of course you have to wait. And we need to wait for more information about the safety of this vaccine. But like people who have anaphylactic like reaction by taking peanuts, by taking any kind of food products or maybe certain medication, uh, they can safely take this medication. Okay, okay, good to know. Um, now, since we are talking about, you know, those who can and, and shouldn't get the vaccine, um, are there any uh, contraindications, you know, people who cannot absolutely ever have this vaccine? Actually, there is no absolute contraindication to this vaccine. But as I have mentioned to you that uh, if you get a reaction before by taking any kind of the vaccine, mm -hmm. it could be probably because of the content of that vaccine. So uh, mm -hmm. the most important thing is that before you get this vaccine, uh, you need to, uh, uh, there need to be more uh, 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 information about the safety of COVID-19 vaccine as well. Otherwise, there is no absolute contraindications. Right, because a lot of things go into making a vaccine. It's not just that viral right. particle that they're using, right? Exactly. It's more than just um, the, um, they need other products to stabilize the vaccine, as you mentioned, you know, right. for the nanoparticles and everything. So people can have allergies to any of those. So exactly. they should be careful if they've had an allergy to a previous vaccine of any kind. Exactly, that is the um, thing. And, and how about children? Can they um, be given this vaccine safely? Um, actually, right now, there is not enough, I would say, sufficient uh, studies that have done on uh, kids. So, mm -hmm. right now, it's considered safe to get the vaccine anyone who is above the age of 16 years. I see. Okay. Okay, good. Good to know. Um, and how about people who have some chronic illnesses, like they have diabetes or high blood pressure and they've been taking medications for some time for those? Can they safely take the vaccine? Okay, so people who have any of the chronic condition, I would say diabetes, maybe asthma, they can safely take the vaccine because the reason is that they are more prone to develop infection. So it is very important for those people to take the vaccine. 
right of course absolutely the benefits are are, are way more than exactly. any my mild side effects right and how about autoimmune diseases there are people who suffer from rheumatoid arthritis some people have lupus can they safely take the vaccine yes uh, so there has been trials that have been conducted on these people and so there was no flare of their condition so they yeah so they can i think pretty much safely take this vaccine excellent excellent um now dr shokat um how long before a vaccine can be expected to produce the full um spectrum of its effect i would say um after you receive the first vaccine it takes 10 to 14 days to develop an antibodies but in order to be fully protected you need to take both the vaccines both the doses okay 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 so um a uh, perfect i think um um if you wanted to add anything specific to to um our discussion uh for our listeners maybe as advice um because i think we've covered some of the most important questions that we've been receiving um but anything that you would like to add yeah i would suggest everyone to take this vaccine because um as we have cleared a lot of misconception about the vaccine because a lot of people have a concern that it does have the life uh, virus in it some people have a concern about the microchip and some believe that it alters the dna so i we ha- i have cleared everything and this vaccine is pretty much safe so i would recommend everyone to take this vaccine perfect thank you so much for sharing your information and your knowledge with us i hope that a lot of people will feel much more comfortable uh while getting this vaccine now Uh thank you very much guys for listening in today and uh we shall be back soon. Um if you have any questions for us please don't uh hesitate to leave them um in the comment box below and we shall certainly try our best to address your concerns. Thank you very much.